it's a horrible wet day here in West Cork Island and we haven't had much luck with the weather. It's been wet since the beginning of August. So what better weather than to carry on with my lampshade project. As you can see, I've found I've decided on my layout I've put all my motifs down and I've all secured them with a stitch so they're all secured to the cloth so they're secured to the bit of poplin and the thicker backing cloth so the next step now is to make the background and to decide what type of background I want to make Here's something else I'm working on. It's for the bottom of a sunscreen for my window. I'm waiting for some thread. I'm going up to Bantry to get some more thread because this is done in number 80, but it's unbleached, so it's slightly cream colored. And on this piece, I've done various different types of background stitch here it's a kind of irregular picot this is a thick bar this one is a traditional picot and this one is clones knot so once i get my thread i can finish this and what i like about working on lace is i can just fold this up and take it anywhere with me and I can just expose the part I'm working on without taking too much room and just work away. I take it if I have to go for a hospital appointment or if I go to the park or if I sit outside. So the same with this one. I won't be working on it with it completely exposed. I'll just be... I'll just be working on a small part of it. So as I'm left-handed, I'm going to start in the left-hand corner and for this project, I'm using anchor number 100. So this is the thinnest thread you can normally get. I keep my thread in a little Ziploc bag because that way it keeps clean. And... I've got two hooks. I'm going to first try it out because I've got a 0.5 hook here, but I'm, I've am i worn the tip out, I think. I've literally crocheted too much. I'm, I think I need a new hook because it, I've got a feeling it's going to drag on the thread. And here's my trusty 0.6 hook that I've used for the past... 10 years at least and it's a, a steady little workhorse um, as you can see if you look carefully for some reason the longer I use a hook the more it wears so if you look they're, they're slightly bent they're never straight I've got a feeling it's just the way you hold the hook and the, the pressure you put on it, it must affect the metal, or else I'm Yuri Geller. <laughs> so when you're making the background, you start at an edge and then you make your chain and you need to make the chain just long enough to reach the motif. If I also, when I hook the thread, the, the crochet hook in, I don't use the, let's get it focused, the edge stitch of the motif. I go just behind it. You see those two little threads? I would hook into there. The reason is, if you attach your background to the stitch itself it can pull it out of shape and distort it another thing is always make sure that the 
length of the chain is long enough to just reach not too much and not too little so what I'll be doing I'll be most probably crocheting up and down here and filling in the gap I'm leaving this side undone and I'll be doing the same thing to the other side because these two sides are going to interlock and then I can join them up when the work is all finished. I started um, making the background with picots and it looked too busy. So I switched over to chains and started again. When you attach your chains to the back of motifs, always make sure you're not doing it on the edge. Like here on that particular edge, you wouldn't attach the stitch to the proper edge you just I always attach it to the places where I covered cord so don't forget that um, the background will then come behind the motifs because the, the motifs are pinned upside down so when you're hooking into the back of the motif you won't see it from the front and it looks neater. Another very important thing is to make sure that the tension is right. Don't have the chains too loose or too tight. You don't want the chains to pull the motif out of shape. So basically once you've covered all the background between the motifs, You'll be lifting it off and you'll have one piece of material. But if you haven't got the tension right on your background, it'll pucker. So some bits will bulge and, and it won't lie flat. So this is how far I've got for the moment. I'll be posting on Instagram. My username there is the same as here, Lace from Ireland, so you can see my progress. And tomorrow I'll be making a Christmas wreath out of lichen because there's a competition on in town for the best Christmas wreath, so I'll give it a go.